Hi everyone, um, I'm uh, just making this little video to show you something that I wasn't able to show you at the recent uh, training weekend um, and thought you know, it'd be worth sharing with the rest of the group because I think this is really quite uh, exciting and useful for those kind of energy controlling, demand shaping topics that we've been talking about. So this is a, a, a remote socket that runs on the Z-Wave standard. Um, I'll go through the kind of short version and, and demo how it works now and if you're interested then you can then you can listen to me ramble on um, until I decide to make a cup of tea or something. So um, yeah, so this is uh, the socket. Uh, this particular one has a uh, power meter built into it as well. You can just get a straight on-off socket or you can get one with a dimmer, you know, for, for lights and things. But as you can see, you just um, you plug it into the socket and then you plug whatever kind of device you want to control into the other thing. Um, on my laptop over here, this little USB jobby um, is one of the, again, that's one of the kind of basic um, controllers. Um, it was the cheapest one I could find actually. It was only, that was £25. The socket was about £35. Um, which does, you know, it's, it's, it does seem pretty expensive at the moment, but what it does is, what it does and the way it does it is, is pretty cool. So I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Follow me into my lounge. This is the little uh, IKEA lamp that we're going to be controlling. And I'm going to put the camera in my mouth for a second while I plug this stuff in. So we plug into that. And then we plug in to our power. So I've already I've already set this up with the computer. There's there's quite a lot of faff with the configuration to do at the moment. So on my computer screen, um, oops, uh, you can see this is a open source piece of software called Home Genie. Um, there are other ones available. The one that I brought with me to the training uh, um, to the training weekend wasn't um, quite so user friendly. So I've already I've connected all this stuff up. I haven't got the I haven't got the meter function working yet, but uh, uh, you know, again, a bit more time. And so we look, Ooh, lamp is off. Press the on button. Oh, magic, lamp is on. I suppose I should do that. <laughs> you might think, oh, what if you've got someone hiding around the corner turning the lamp on and off while you're uh, doing that? But no, obviously, as I hope you can see, that's working. That's quite a we're only working at a, a short distance here, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go out to the shed, which um, I've checked is about, put the camera there, I've checked it's about 15 metres, um, a distance we're working there. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about the range and the potential range of these things in a sec. So, there we go. I don't usually leave the light on in my shed. Yeah, welcome to my shed. Welcome to my increasing collection of homebrew. Right, I'm gonna yeah, space the door a bit. It's very convenient. Yeah, don't wanna be editing an annoying video with all this stuff. So let's keep it quick. Okay, we can see the light. I see. It's turning it on and off from a distance of about 12 or 15 meters. It's quite quick as well. There's no, you can see the little joy, little LED lights up telling you. It sends, and on the the screen it gives you information about the last, um, you know, like the last time it uh, communicated with that socket. So. It's uh, it's not interacting with the it's not interacting with the device at all. It's um, it's only interacting with the socket that controls it. So there we go. That could be a really useful thing for you know turning people's high power devices on and off and shaping demands and things like that. Um, it says the the rating of the thing uh, the rating of the socket is around maybe just a little bit under. 3,000 watts, which would rule out maybe some of the massive T-urns, but it all depends, you know, there's a huge amount of variety there, obviously, um, the only thing you gain, you know, by by going with a, 
sort of more powerful element in a in a two year that's a classic example is that it you know it works faster so anyone with anything under three thousand watts we can probably be fine and I'm sure um, if we prefer to do some fiddling around ourselves there are controllable relays that are kind of three point five and, and above. But anyway, so that's the that's the short version. We can turn things on and off remotely, potentially at a range of up to a hundred meters. Um, one thing, this little USB the the manual says if you have it plugged just directly into a laptop, you pick up a, a bit of interference. So just adding a little extender cable to that would be a bonus, you know, you could quite easily make a little weatherproof case for that, stick it up on a um, stick it up on a, on a post or somewhere high. Um, I did also test it um, last night. Went round the court, went round the corner, which is about 30 metres away, um, and would be going through like um, two or three houses. So, say like six walls, you know, six loads of brick walls, and it's still working okay. Um, uh, yeah, the, I mean, one of the main things about this Z-Wave standard is that it uses uh, 800 megahertz as a, as a sort of standard frequency, or within that general range. So you might be aware that Wi-Fi signals and that kind of standard is on something um, 2.4 gigahertz as that as that standard frequency. And although it's you know it's very it's very popular, it's getting kind of increasingly crowded and busy. So that can cause issues, whereas they've obviously the people behind this standard have licensed that. It's different in different countries for various, you know, for various reasons. So part of the I think part of the expense of these part of the expense of these items is that the companies making them are relatively small. You know, there's only so much choice out there, they're not really mass market, mass produced product um, just yet. Um, although you know, it's this all this stuff that we're talking about just you know, it basically didn't exist about, about four or five years ago, as far as I can tell. It's very difficult. Lots of different competing uh, standards. So it seems like Z-Wave is Z-Wave and Z-Wave Plus are going to be the ones. You know, seem to be the ones that are easiest to find out about now. I say easiest. I mean, it's taken a day or two of messing around to to get it working. Um, that might be you know more a, a software issue as well. But anyway, um, so yeah, so that's um, uh, that's that's Z-Wave really. Um, I'll, I'll definitely have a look at getting the energy monitor. You know, the uh, basic on-off switch was maybe about ten pounds cheaper than one, which has this meter function in it, and that can read um, that can read all all the basic you know watts, volts, amps, power factor, which I have no idea <laughs> what what that is, and it can you know log things over time. Um, but the soft, you know the software side of it, I'll just show you. So this um, energy monitor widget that I've got at the moment is quite nice. You know, it's very it's very well set up to just you know be able to um, just to be able to kind of zoom in on different areas and navigate and have it all logged. So um, it's very kind of comprehensible. I guess is the word. Um, I don't think I have anything more to add. I think it's time for a cup of tea um, and to take my car to the garage. So, bye!